Good morning, everyone. Uh, today's little tutorial is going to talk through the development of a script to run a bunch of quantum chemistry calculations on a supercomputer um, without much shepherding on my part. The motivation for this is I had a colleague who needed to run some MP2 calculations with NWChem for about 1,500 structures and sent them to me as a big zip file and I'm going to send it back to him as an atomic simulation environment or AFC database so he can use them to train machine learning models. So today we're going to talk through two little steps on how we built up that script to be able to do these effectively. The first is showing how we can use um, ASC to create a ability to run these MP2 calculations through a simple Python interface, and then how we can run many of those ASC calculations in parallel using the uh, par parallel script environment for Python, otherwise known as Parcel. So, all right, let's get to it. So the script here, I, I've got open on NERSC, the supercomputer that I'm running all of these on. And we'll start off by showing how we build up uh, this AS ability to run a function or an MP2 as a simple Python function. That in itself is very easy um, once we've already read our atoms into a ASC format Python object and um, how we um, can also define which calculation we're running as a ASC NWCAN calculator. So that here is actually just a little simple function. What I do is I open up a temporary directory for my files I switch such that my Python process is running from that temporary directory, so any files that it writes to disk are somewhere that they won't interfere with anybody else. Then I run the calculation. I set up the scratch directories for mwchem to point there. I run it, and you note that I um, have a runtime around this because I want to get an idea how long these calculations are. So that's how we define actually running the ASC object. The next two parts are where does this atoms object come from and how do I set up NWChem. The atoms objects are read out of this function here called generate structures. And you'll note that I've hard coded a path to the zip file, which my colleague Henry uh, emailed to me. And because I'm a bit of a neat freak and also because HPC file systems do very poorly with large numbers of very small files, I read them out of the zip file directly using Python's zip file module. So what I do is I open up the zip file, I iterate over all files in it. For each of them that end with XYZ, I open them. Uh, and you'll note that I can read that directly with ASE's read function. After I pass this um, file object through a text wrapper, because this is going to read the data out of that file as binary. What this in Python does is convert that to a Python string format, which is what ASC expects. And you'll note, because I'm passing a file object rather than a path to a file, ASC cannot auto-detect what format this is, and I have to tell it. So that here combines into this big loop as a generator, such that I can iterate through the zip file and uh, generate little tuples of the name of the file and the text IO wrapper. So that's how we read the ASC objects out of the tuple. Uh, I build the NWChem calculator um, here. The, we are running a pretty tricky set of MP2 calculations. Uh, they're for larger structures that are very low in symmetry. So I have to do a couple tricky things like run a DFT calculation first save the uh, intermediate um, guess for the uh, wave functions of that object, and then use those as a starting point for the MP2. So you can ignore a lot of this stuff, but suffice it to say, all that it's doing is setting up my, how I want that NWChem calculation to work. I do have to do a couple other things, knowing that I'm gonna be running these in parallel. For instance, I set the allowed disk cache space by the, I divide it by the number of calculations that I'm going to run in parallel so that um, each calculation doesn't try to use all of my scratch space. This enforces it such that they each have their own little sandbox. 
And I do some work here with defining a NW chem calculation straight uh, um, out to run on um, the NERSC nodes using their preferred format. Here, because I'm running more than one task per job, I have to manually override how many MPI ranks I want per task. And you can see I multiply the number of ranks per node by the number of nodes per um, each NW chem run, such that each of them will not interfere with each other. So that means I can have a single job with multiple instances of NW chem running on separate nodes within that job. So that's how I do it. Um, just to recap, the ASC part, I've got a very basic function, which takes an Adams object and the NW chem um, objects, runs them and returns the output as an Adams object. I get those Adams objects by running a um, loop over my zip files contents and producing both the file name and the um, ASC object using ASC's read function. And I create my NWChem calculator in a way that is aware of both how many um, tasks I'm going to run in that job and also with some specific settings for NERSC. They're going to be different if you're using a different supercomputer. Um, and for these, I basically got this straight from the um, NERSC documentation. So that's one half of this. Uh, the other is Parcel. So Parcel is a um, uh, library that allows you to run distributed calculations in Python and is specifically geared towards working with supercomputers. So what I have to do uh, to create a um, ability to run on NERSC is I create a configuration which describes how I'm going to request jobs and once I have them what I'm going to do. And that mainly takes the form of defining this high throughput executor. So this is a tool that tells me that when I have um, HPC resources available, I'm going to place multiple of these little Python programs, which request work from my overall workflow, launch a Python process for each task, and then run whatever function I told it in that Python process. So here I'm telling it how many processes I want. I'm going to run as many processes as jobs I want to run in parallel. I also tell it how to get the job. Um, this tells me to talk to the Slurm job scheduler. It tells me which accounts I'm going to use, how long they need to run for, how many nodes per job here, number of nodes per NW chem times the number of NW chem and some information on how to set up my environment. Uh, you can see that I'm loading in Python, activating my Conda environment, and doing some things that let NWChem run effectively on their system. Some other uh, little tricks to note, because I'm running um, tasks that span more than one node, the way that this parcel workflow is going to work is that I'm only going to place this little, it's called a pilot job on one of those nodes. So uh, I'm here configured parcel to only place one using its so-called simple launcher. In contrast to other configurations for parcel that place one of these little pilot jobs on each node I have available, simple launcher only does one. Additionally, I may run such that I have more Python processes running on that node than that node has cores available. So this little workaround here ensures that Parcel doesn't prevent me from oversubscribing that node with processes by telling it that it can put a million on each core on that node. Now, the reason why that's not a problem for us is because most of the work is getting done by um, a process that's running on another node. So I can overload this one node that happens to have my launcher with a lot of Python processes, and that's not going to affect my overall performance because most of the time that Python process is going to be waiting for a calculation from another node to finish. So that's how we set up the parcel configuration. Once we have that, um, all I need to do is tell it which function it's going to run, and that is with this decorator up here. What this is saying is that this function doesn't get run 
um, in the host process. It doesn't get run on my login node. It actually gets run away uh, on one of the compute nodes. So this, all of this here is going to execute on a um, compute node on NERSC's Cori cluster. So that's how we set up the parcel. Um, there's a bit of configuration that you'll have to do. I know how to do all of this because I went to parcels documentation and they actually happen to have a configuration example for Cori, uh, which is the supercomputer that I'm running on. Yep, NERSC. And you may note there's a lot of um, similarities here. It tells me how to set up these um, particular environments. Though, as we discuss, there's a bit of trickery that goes into play because I'm running um, each, uh, most of my work on, node, on separate nodes using MPI. I don't need to place a parcel instance on each node. So I switch to simple launcher and I've got this trick um, that allows me to run more processes on the log on that one node, which has my parcel pilot by overriding this number of cores per worker, such that it can launch a million workers per thread or per core. So that's the parcel part. Now let's talk about putting it all together. Um, the way that I architect most of my scripts is they start off with a argument parser, such that this is a command line a program where I can define perhaps how many nodes I want to run per NWChem how many NWChem calculations I want to run in parallel, and some other um, quick business on defining um, in, uh, details about each individual calculation. So the way that this works, when I call this command line argument, it first creates that object that I can use to read structures out of my zip file. It defines my NWChem calculator. I create my parcel configuration and then launch it. That's what parcel load does. Now I'm gonna go through and submit all of these structures to parcel. So what I do is I first connect to a ASE database, then loop over each file or in that zip file. For each, I create an atoms object, which I then populate with some information kind of describing where it came from and what calculation I'm gonna run on it later. I then use my database to check whether that calculation already exists. I look to see if there exists a entry where I've already ran that particular file name with the desired um, quantum chemistry basis set. If so, I mark that I skip it and I don't submit. If this is a new calculation, I run that run in WChem function. Because I ran that function or decorated that function with a parcel Python app decorator, What's going to happen is this um, uh, calculation is not going to actually run. It's going to return a future that I can then read later to get the result of the calculation. So in layman's terms, what's happening is I'm submitting that calculation to be run somewhere else. And then I have a quick notification that will tell me when it has complete. So I submit all of them. I close my database. Now I use Python's concurrency library. Uh, these futures that parcel creates are compatible with Python's futures from their concurrent um, concurrency library. So what I do is I create this as completed object, which is going to loop over these futures that I've created in the order that they finish. So what happens when each one finishes is I'm given that future object. I then check if there was an exception. If so, I print a status message to tell me that something went wrong. If not, I grab the result and return that um, and store it in the database. And if you note here, all of that info that I created and stored as part of that Adam's object is still there. I use that to create the additional flags in the database, uh, which I use to tell me when a job has uh, been run before. This will run until all of my tasks complete, at which point I print out to a user how many of them went awry. So now that all that has happened, let's take a quick look at what this looks like in practice. So my job has been running since, uh, looks like, um, I think eight o'clock this morning. It's been running for about an hour and a half, um, in which time, 
Uh, let's scroll down to the bottom here. Ah, I can't see how many completed. Uh, it looks like 9% of them have finished. That means about 150. Um, I'm currently running 64 of them at a time, which you can see from my Python call here. I told it to run each task on two nodes, run 64 of them in parallel. So what has ended up happening is I have a 128 node job running. And if we take a look at this temporary directory, I have, if you'll trust me, 64 different calculations running. And I can see if I look for um, the output objects and I grab the uh, line of the output file that tells me what's no what node it's running on, uh, you should see once this finishes that I should be running on 64 different unique nodes. It's going to take a kind of hot second to run because the file system must be particularly stressed out this morning. So um, we'll just say you trust me on that. Um, all right, looks like the head node's having some trouble. Uh, one other thing is I can show you is here's my log from Parcel. Uh, you can see that it knows that I've got about 1,400 tasks to run, and it's running 64 of them right now. Uh, let's also go back and show you the ASE database. So let's go to my home directory where I'm running this in fast fine tuned force fields, initial database. Um, so let's read my database. Let's print out um, all the columns that are in it. And you can see that, um, and this one's definitely going to take a few minutes, that I should have a database. Oh, that was faster than I thought. I've got 144 um, uh, entries in it. You can see some that I ran yesterday that are 17 hours old, some from this morning that are about an hour and a half. And if we sort by um, the age, we'll see that, yep, my most recent one completed four minutes ago. It was a cluster of 15 waters that took about an hour to complete. So this is going to run probably for the next day um, to gather all my data. But um, I don't need to check on it anymore because Parcel's handling all of that requesting nodes, ensuring that as one completes, another one runs. And I have ASC automating the process of reading the output files and storing the data in a database. So that's all we have for today. Uh, hopefully you'll find little bits of this useful and feel free to reach out if you have any questions about it.